Okay, Nerds of the North, back again. Another movie review here for you. This one's a follow-up to my Dungeons & Dragons two-film collection review. I have now tracked down and watched Dungeons & Dragons 3, The Book of Vile Darkness. Quite actual a, campaign. Actual campaign, actual physical book oh, as act well. Yeah. Uh, this movie... Now, Courtney Solomon's been working on these movies for Dungeons & Dragons as a project of love, and I have to say he he's not just gone in the right direction, but he almost knocked it out of the park with this one. Better than the first two. This was the Dungeons & Dragons film that, if you're a nerd for Dungeons & Dragons, you'll catch the little hits and hints and pieces. Names of actual places are said. Uh, I don't know how many items we were able to identify. Oh, that was crazy. Like, Javelin of Lightning, Ring of Force, Force, Bag, Bag of, of Holding. It, the list just keeps going uh, on. The, was, that'd be the Ion Stone Necklace. The Ion Stone Necklace. Um, it, it, was, it was just amazing with all the little nitpicks that they threw in. It was good with it to find all those little bits and pieces for the nerds. Now, story-wise, okay. uh, this is... I got, so, Mm -hmm. Can I say something? The intro for the story, to break it down the story, I found personally was dragged on a little too long, wasted a little bit of time, and it felt like I was reading one of those new online Marvel comics that you can yeah. get. But other than Which that... It's the classic case of show us, don't tell us. Yeah. When yeah. you've got narration, do it properly. Lord of the Rings did narration properly. Yeah. This is a step in the right direction... But it's the same that he did for Wrath of the Dragon God. Yeah. So, it, while it does work to a point, you can do better. And always work to be improving if you're making a trilogy. It's true. Because now if, you wanna, if we want to get a fourth one, this one has hopefully done well. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So, yeah, as you said with the opening, I did like the concept of... Um, I don't know if they'd be clerics or paladins... I, I don't know what they were. They're a little bit more paladins. No, I didn't see any healing, healing being done. Yeah, no. and the whole ritual remind me of like a um, a paladin ritual you'd have to do to join in like a knighthood or something that they mm -hmm. that and they have. And knights and they call them were paladins than, more often than, than not. So I believe there were some paladins. Yeah, so that was interesting. Being the the for for those of you who don't know, Palor is the god of the sun. So, kind of fitting that the God of the Sun fights a Book of Darkness. That was that worked out well. Pretty sure. Now, the main character, Grayson... This kid. <laughs> it was pretty interesting how you kept see, we kept seeing the uh, crisis of faith he was going to, through. Yes, yeah. So... Well, right off the bat, like, right at his grand opening ceremony for when he's coming to become this great paladin, all of a sudden, it doesn't go the way he wants. He doesn't get blasted by the god. He goes through this little emotional moment with his father. And, like, right when that emotional moment gets right to, like, that climaxing part, they get ambushed and yeah, slaughtered. It's, it's pretty much that... You, he says it two or three times. Like, he's questioning Paylor. Like, yeah. he was fully believing, but he was just... It was constantly questioning... Are you here? Are you doing that? And I can see that because what had he gone through to gain Paylor's blessing? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Either. This is this movie can be seen as literally Paylor putting him on a trial to see if he's worthy. Worthy of the blessing, yeah. You just And come the end of the movie, yeah he is. It's one of those chosen one movies where the mm -hmm. chosen one actually has to earn his right instead of just like, you know, oh, you're the chosen one. You can automatically do everything because you're great. Yeah. No, the one thing I did like about this movie that they did well is this is why you don't have evil people in your party. Oh, he was awesome. The necromancer, you didn't know which way was up whenever he was talking. <laughs> it's so the angles of the... He played everyone for a fool. Everyone. Including the leader of the party. Even the Barbarian wasn't that bad. The Barbarian actually had his... Now, the Dusk Blade was retarded. I'm... I'm sorry. He kept getting... Almost... He was raging more than the Barbarian was. 
Actually, you know what? The barbarian reminded me of like a barbarian that visited a Buddhist temple on his passage. Yeah. <laughs> this was not a Chaos Hulk smash barbarian. No, this he... was, I'm going to wait, and then I'm going to throw my javelin only in the right time. Yeah. Marlo Although I do have to look up. Do, do javelins of lightning actually vanish after they're thrown? Because... No. They, they, it's... Or do they just become a standard old javelin? Because if so, that one, that one lied. Well, they'll actually, it depends on how many charges it actually has. So just, they're supposed to be one use, to the best of my knowledge. And then, and that, that's true. Oh, well. Um, honestly, the CG was better the than Wrath of the Dragon God. Awesome. It fit in nicely. They did have a, okay, they might not have, nope, you clearly saw a dungeon. And you saw a dragon, so... Well, you gotta see had both. This, this fits. It does fit the stereotype. But, uh, yeah, a dungeon, a dragon, that was pretty well fought, actually. They, the dragon wasn't being stupid, it would just... What level were these guys? That had to have been a young one, at least. Oh, that had to be, like, a young dragon. Because I didn't see any spells, well, I saw one breath. Well, what's, uh, the main evil lady, she actually claims that's it for treasure. No wonder this was such a mediocre dragon, so... That's true, that's true. Um... But one of my favorite CG parts is actually when he uses the bag of holding to, uh, yeah, to he, hide the body. He hides the body of a seven-foot barbarian in the bag of holding, Yeah. then throws it into, wa into the water. Open. And what was best about that is you kept seeing the water bubble, because the bag's going to be absorbing the water yeah, until the bag is full. Yeah, he left the bag open, so, so he just kept filling up and filling That's kind of cool. I, I like seeing that. That, um, yeah. that made the bag of holding feel more real, even though it's a little... It's yeah, this big, big, he just like, stretches. Him, stretches it up all over him. I think I've seen that in Roger Rabbit. It's called the portable hole. <laughs> yeah, right? Looney Tunes. That's what that reminds oh. me of. Anywho. Yeah, Dungeons and Dragons, Ra um, Book of Vile Darkness. It's better than the first two. By far better A than lot the first better two. than the first two. Way better than the first two. If but you... there's, there's not really much to say about it. If you're a Dungeons and Dragons fan, watch it. You'll enjoy it. If you're a sword sorcery fantasy fan, watch it. There's a lot better movies out there than it. Um, it'll be like what they watch on like the sci-fi channels on your Sunday afternoon. And movies the thing is, like, only it'll be better than them. I'd have to. I have to honestly say, I think Lady Hawk is better. And that's a discussion for another time, because. Lady Hawk's gonna need a video all to itself. Yeah, that one's gonna need well, a we're, video all to itself. Sorry for the rush, we're out of time. Take care, guys. We'll see you hopefully some other time. You're gonna be coming down? Yeah, I'll be back down. For sure. Alright, we'll do some more movie reviews next time this guy decides to grace me with his presence. <laughs> Till next time. Take care, see you later.